All right, well, it is time for the campaign beat. It's our daily roundup of news from the French presidential campaign trail. That's with Florence Vilmino. Hey, Hi, Flo. We are going to start off with some news that came in this morning. We've got the far right national front. It has a new president. A new, new president, uh, we should say, because remember on Monday, uh, Marine Le Pen said that she was taking a temporary break from leading the party to focus on her campaign. And she was replaced uh, by a man named uh, Jean Francois Jalc, a relatively unknown member of the the Front National, uh, but he didn't last that long. Uh, it emerged this morning that he was being replaced as acting president. So what went wrong? Well, uh, controversial comments Jalc made in the past have resurfaced back in 2000. He reportedly cast doubt over the use of Zyklon B, uh, that gas that was used in uh, Nazi death camps. Now, he has contested these allegations uh, of Holocaust denial, which, remember, are a crime here in France. He says that he just doesn't want to take up the post in the current climate. All right. Well, meanwhile, we saw Marine Le Pen uh, she's busy <laughs> on the campaign trail, it can be said. Uh, but she did start off by fishing. She spent Thursday morning on a fishing boat, a, a trawling uh, boat, a, a fishing trawler in the Mediterranean Sea. You can see images from her fishing trip uh, there. Uh, we'll see she had a lot of fun throwing around an octopus. Poor little octopus there. Now, uh, later in the day, she held a rally in Nice. Now, this was her first official rally in uh, the second part of her campaign leading up to round two. The choice of Nice wasn't random. Uh, it's a conservative voting territory, and indeed, Marine Le Pen is trying to fish for votes in the conservative camp, uh, trying to get uh, people who supported François Fillon uh, to support her, and she obviously took advantage of this opportunity to swing out at her rival. Take a listen. We're David fighting Goliath, and the love we have for our country is as solid as David's stone. And with it, we will bring down the submissiveness, the abandonment, the surrender, the treason they're trying to impose on our people. Well, Le Pen uh, speaking there, but uh, Flo, for some of our viewers, it might uh, not be clear that the choice between Macron and Le Pen is actually not that easy to make for some voters. And it's causing friction within some parties, for instance, the Conservative Party. Now, remember, uh, when François Fillon came in third in round one, uh, he immediately called on voters to vote for Emmanuel Macron to block the far-right National Front. And indeed, uh, Les Républicains issued a communique calling on their voters to block the Front National. They never mentioned the name. Macron, so there was a slight nuance. But even within the party, uh, some people are opposed to this strategy. Uh, James Creedon tells us more. Nicolas Sarkozy announced on Wednesday that he intends to vote for Emmanuel Macron. On his Facebook page, the former president said he regrets the result of the election, but that the choice of the French people must be accepted. He said his decision to vote for Macron is a personal one and not an official endorsement. In publishing the message, Sarkozy is attempting to win over influence in Les Républicains. The party is divided over whether or not to openly endorse Emmanuel Macron. If we continue to throw ourselves at Emmanuel Macron like we're currently doing, I think there's a chance our party could cease to exist politically. The official party position is somewhat vague. A compromised text calls for voters to block the National Front without explicitly endorsing Emmanuel Macron. A clear division is now emerging. Former Prime Minister Alain Juppé is unambiguous about the need to clearly support Emmanuel Macron. When you want to beat someone, there aren't a thousand choices. You vote for the other candidate. That's why I said openly I will vote for Macron. And I called on all sensible voters to do the same. To endorse or not to endorse, two very different positions within a divided party. That James Creedon reporting there. So now we've got this uh, duel from a, a distance, you know, it continues between them, the two front runners trying to pick up voters. So we had Le Pen in the south and we had Macron. Uh, meanwhile, he was visiting a working class uh, suburb of Paris. Macron was in Sarcelles, which is a banlieue, uh, you know, an inner city, well, outer city uh, suburb, uh, uh, the projects uh, as they're called here. Uh, now, you can see in the images that we're going we're gonna to see shortly that he got quite a warm welcome there. You can see him uh, shaking hands. He even uh, played soccer with uh, some of the uh, the young kids that were there. But uh, the truth is that he has a lot of con convincing to do in Sarcelles. Uh, in round one of the election, Jean-Luc Mélenchon from the far left and the conservative François Fillon came in first, so ahead of him. So he's trying to uh, pick up votes there uh, in the banlieue, the suburbs. Uh, he also took uh, advantage of the moment to tackle his rival. Re remember, this week we were talking a lot about what happened in northern France, in Amiens. Uh, Emmanuel Macron had staged a meeting there, but he was kind of one-upped 
by uh, by Marine Le Pen, who arrived, took selfies with workers at a, a, a factory. Uh, and Emmanuel Macron, in this uh, yesterday, he said that it was unlikely that Le Pen could have staged such a media coup in Sarcelles. Take a listen to him. Madame Le Pen can't come to a neighborhood like this because she wants them to go away. She wants to separate France, break it in two. I didn't come with false promises. I didn't say with me tomorrow would be better. I said you'll keep working. Now, Macron is very busy uh, today as well. In uh, just a few hours, he'll be visiting Ouradour sur, sur Glane. Now, this is a very iconic village uh, in France. It's uh, in west central France. And you might remember it was completely destroyed uh, during the Second World War. Uh, inhabitants were massacred by the Nazis in 1944. And he says this is a very symbolic visit to, quote, measure the weight of the threat. Now, Flo, we saw, of course, this first round, it, it was a major setback for all the traditional uh, parties, mainstream parties, and so we're, we're seeing Les Républicains, uh, they're divided. We're seeing a bit more unity from the socialists. For now. There's unity for now. Now, remember, the first round of the election was a real slap in the face for the socialists. It must be said, Benoit Hamon drew just over 6 percent of the vote, so the party is certainly going to have a lot of soul-searching to do in the coming months. But the priority right now is to uh, make sure that the Front National doesn't make it into round two of the election. Luc Schrego, Karim Yayaoui and Clara Castelli went to find out more. You'll see that even the leader of the Socialist Party has gotten involved at the grassroots level. The moment the dream died. Few thought Socialist Party candidate Benoit Hamon would make it to the second round, but no one expected him to gain just 6% of the vote. It left the party scrambling to prevent a slide further to the right. Marine Le Pen. President Marine Le Pen, never. We have to block the far right and vote for Republican values. Two days later, party activists were out in force, distributing millions of leaflets printed urging support for centrist independent Emmanuel Macron. At their side, party leader Jean-Christophe Compadelis. I don't think France will ever accept Marine Le Pen, but we really have to be careful about abstention. The fact is, the fewer people who turn out, the more Le Pen will get. You never know what could happen. A mishap isn't out of the question, and that's why we as socialists have to campaign. For activists, Samon represented true socialist values. But without him in the running, their hope is for the nation to rally and block the National Front from getting through. It's quite hard and painful, but we're taking the defeat in our stride, and we're trying to support the candidate that's better than the other one. A lot of people are disappointed and won't turn up to vote. But that just means I have to work harder to get people, especially the young, out to vote. For many people, however, the decision's already been made. I see a real gap between Macron and Le Pen, so I don't think just reading something like this will change anyone's mind from one round to the next. Not mine, at least, but you never know. Such optimism may be the only thing the socialists have left with the party threatening to tear itself apart as its MPs flock either further left or right in upcoming parliamentary elections. Their overwhelming hope is that a political group 50 years old won't end up on the scrap heap of history. All right, Flo, well, thank you very much uh, for a look at the latest campaign action. We'll see you again on Monday.